Hey guys, today we are going to check out this scanner. This is a Lounge C Reader Elite dedicated for Audi vehicles. So we are in Audi Q3. This is a 2012 Audi Q3 8U and we will check how this works. And I will also check if you can use this in Golf Mark 7 and if you can use this in Audi A4 B6 or even this old Audi coupe over there. So let's check what's in the box and then I will connect with the vehicle. First of all we have this quick start guide in about 10 languages I believe so this will show you how to turn this uh, device on, how to go through the configuration, the initial configuration and where to find the OBD2 port in most vehicles. So this is uh, pretty basic stuff. We don't need this at all. And here's an user manual in English only, I believe. And this is a little bit more detailed when it comes to the functionality of this device. We have some information about the um, Universal Diagnostic OBD2 protocol. We have some information about this uh, device and we have uh, um, uh, both instructions for the um, device and the procedures that you can perform in your vehicle. We have USB Type-C cable, so this is a pretty new thing, I believe. All those uh, scanners that are currently available are using micro USB or even the older mini USB, and if a device is using USB-C, you know that's, that's a pretty fresh design. Okay, so we can take off this screen protector and you can see that we have a huge display over here with some touch buttons we don't have any physical buttons so i believe this is a touch screen and we have a standard obd2 uh, ca cable over here about meter or so so i believe as soon as i connect it to the um, to the vehicle this should turn this should turn on what what do we have over here Where's the USB port? It, it will be hidden. It will be hidden over here. Yes, we have USB-C port and we have micro SD card port over here as well. There's no micro SD card included. So if you need it, you need to provide it yourself. And there's a reset pin over here, I believe. And I assume this will be running Android, some kind of Android system variation. Um, so let's turn it on and, and let's check how this works. Okay, I can see that the display is on. It's pretty pretty dim right now. I can barely see it, um, especially when there's a black background over here. Oh, it's much brighter right now. So I believe when the system loads, it will just adjust the uh, display brightness. Okay, so that's cool. Let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, and I believe, I believe we are here. So it took about 15 seconds to boot up. We can see the battery voltage over here in the upper left corner and we have uh, date and time and Wi-Fi connection status. So I believe you can configure this to connect with your Wi-Fi network. This will help you with two things. First of all, the firmware upgrade over here can be done without your uh, computer. So you don't have to connect this. You don't have to use this, this USB-C cable at all to upgrade this device as long as you have Wi-Fi connection in your vehicle because you need to power this device from your vehicle. And second thing, you can share diagnostic reports and other stuff from this device uh, via email. Okay, I've connected it to Wi-Fi, so we can go back. Let's go to upgrade. Uh, I have the upgrades available over here. One of the apps is uh, maybe not maybe not, let's not call it outdated but we can upgrade it to a newer version we have the version indicator over here as well it's the obd2 the general obd2 standard um, uh, app that's uh, pre-installed over here that can be upgraded but the audi uh, firmware or the demo firmware and other stuff are um, up to date so there's no problem over here so let's press update and we will check how this process looks and how long will it take so right now it's downloading you can see the can you see it the progress bar over here and that's pretty much it it was as easy as that okay so right now let's turn on the ignition 
and let's try to diagnose something in this vehicle. So first of all, let's go to diagnose. Let's select Audi because we want to use the Audi specific app. There are some information about which modules are uh, supported by this application and what are the basic functionality as well as the spe special functions. So you have some guided functions that can be used over here. OK, so let's just press OK. And let's check. Let's check how this interface looks like. I will close the window because it's a little bit noisy over here right now. So let's start with the health report. And uh, I believe this will go through the uh, control modules in the vehicle. It will go through engine brakes, um, uh, um, air condition, door modules, uh, parking sensors, and so on, the infotainment system. It will check all of those systems just to see if there are any pending fault codes that we should check and take care of. So right now we are waiting for the uh, for the initial scan to be done and I believe in a few seconds we should see the report. Over here we can see that uh, the device uh, correctly recognized the vehicle as Audi from 2012 and we can see the VIN and the report is over here. We can see that engine control module has one fault and it's an um, EGR circuit fault. So let's scroll down over here. Nothing else. Maybe let's Let's go to details. Now we cannot go to details, but we can go to report. And there's the report generated for the um, uh, for the uh, for the scan. And we can share it. As I said before, if you have Wi-Fi connection, you can directly send an email with this diagnostic report um, to you or maybe to the owner of the vehicle if you are running a, um, um, uh, a maintenance service of a vehicle or something like this. So I have my email over here and I will just share this report with myself just to see how this looks on my uh, on my email account. So I got the email. So right now let's click the link. The link it's is also shareable. You can share it with um, with someone interested in the uh, in the diagnostics of this vehicle, and we can see the inspection results. And as said before, we have exhaust gas recirculation circuit error code. So that's that's over here as well as a disclaimer and information that all other modules were normal and what exactly was the uh, was the inspection about we can also see name of the workshop so i put just mr fix over here address phone number contact number if you want and serial number of the device and uh, that's that's pretty much it over here in this report so let's go back to the device and maybe let's check this fault in uh, in detail okay so let's go to System selection, let's select engine electronics and the device will connect with the engine control module. It did, we have some information about the module, the hardware uh, part number, we have the uh, actual um, coding. And right now we can go to uh, read diagnostic trouble code section and we can see the actual code over here. So we have the number, we can see that the fault is passive and we have two options, we have help, and if you press it, you have some information about this fault. It's a general the general information about uh, why this code might be uh, present in your car. Maybe the EGR is uh, stuck or so. And you also have this code search button over here, which is pretty cool, actually. If you have internet connection, this will bring you to Google with the phrase Audi and the number code. And you can look for some community-based solutions uh, over here. Maybe there are some usual stuff that you can check in your vehicle to fix this issue and i believe you can even go to youtube there are no speakers over here so sorry about that we cannot listen to the video but i believe this device is powerful enough to watch youtube videos maybe the yeah maybe there is speaker I'm not sure right now because if there is, it's very, very uh, low volume, but I believe it's possible to use this to watch, uh, to watch YouTube tutorials. Okay, since this uh, fault code is passive, we can try to clear it. So let's play, uh, press clear, clear fault memory. 
yes and no fault codes are now present in the vehicle okay so maybe check some live data okay read live uh, data stream and we will select some uh, cool values and check how this looks on the display so i've selected four things egr specified value which is at about 40 percent right now and uh, via, uh, engine speed egr solenoid value so the electromagnet the solenoid that's uh, uh, controlling it this is the actual value and this is the activation value whatever it is uh, and right now when i gently press the throttle we can see we can check how this uh, data looks if the solenoid if the egr is reacting and we can also check how fast is the data refresh over here so we have four uh, data streams and we have about three maybe four uh, refreshes uh, per second so three maybe four hertz we can also press over here on this chart button i believe and we can see this uh, cool chart cool graph uh, which show us the rpm of the vehicle of the engine so maybe let's go back let's try the combine and let's combine this and this maybe okay and we can see right now both things on the graph and the uh, dimmer color is the egr value and the brighter one is the rpm so when i floor the acceleration pedal you can see how the egr is reacting And when I release it, how it moves back down. Maybe we can check uh, DPF status. So this is the ash limit and this is the current ash value. So the limit is 70 grams and current ash volume is 35. So the DPF filter seems to be at about half the capacity. Yeah, 35 would be a exactly half of the capacity and we are 36 so we are at 52 percent maybe or so so that was ash that's left after the regeneration and now let's check the suit this is suit mass measured and we should have suit mass calculated over here as well and we can check those two values 8 grams and minus 3 grams so i believe this uh, dpf uh, was just um, is just after the uh, DPF regeneration procedure which is automatic over here it just happens once a while every 300 or 500 kilometers this depends on the vehicle states uh, state and the driving conditions so if it's uh, cold or warm if you are uh, doing uh, city driving or highway driving it, this happens um, more often or or not so right now we can see that those those values are okay and i i believe i'm good to go for a for a next two or three hundred kilometers before the uh, automatic regeneration will be triggered by the engine control module so over here you can see that we have uh, 464 um, live data streams to select from which is a lot so i believe this device supports all of them but the thing that I don't like is that you have to browse through it. There's no search field and you just have to go through the all 464 values if you are looking for something. That's a little bit annoying and even if you know what you are looking for, like the DPF, you are not sure where it is and this is not exactly alphabetical, so you need to browse through it. I would love if there was a search field over here that I can use to type in just a few letters to limit the search results from this 400 to something a little bit easier to browse through. Okay, so maybe let's try a different module. Let's go to 17, instrument cluster. I'm not sure I have, if I'm able to do this with the engine running, but let's try. Okay, so the device connected with the uh, module, with the instrument cluster module, with the dashboard. And over here, of course, we have all the uh, data. So maybe let's go to adaptation and let's uh, enable the needle sweep, the welcome ceremony. But we need to find the channel and I'm not sure how it's called staging. Okay, 
and right now staging is set to not active so let's switch it to active so input value is active let's save it and I believe it's done needle sweep should be enabled right now maybe now let's try some output tests it's called actuation test over here so let's go in we need to have the ignition on and engine off this is exactly the state that we are in right now let's go over here and we have all the um, all the modules uh, in the instrument cluster available uh, right now over here so maybe let's oh i have this had this pre-selected the speedometer so let's go over here and we will test the speedometer and i believe once i press start we should see the we should see the speedometer test it will go to the end and back and then it should set the needle in the upright position so you can adjust the needle if you for example had the instrument cluster disassembled and the needle is not in the correct uh, place so you can um, turn on this test and adjust the needle if you have the uh, instrument cluster without the front glass and you can still um, still touch the actual needle okay so let's press stop and the instrument cluster goes back to the normal operation mode so maybe let's do the same for the uh, LCD display over here. I believe it should be called uh, segment test. So let's go to segment test. Let's press OK. Let's start it. And we have some tests over here. We have uh, you know, vertical lines. Three and four is horizontal lines. This display is uh, high high density high pixel density so you can barely see it and right now we have color tests and that's it this way you can confirm if the if the display is actually working there's also option called test image in center display so let's so let's try it let's start it and this also shows you some kind of uh, test pattern on the display which you can use to maybe position the and display on the um, uh, circuit board if you are replacing one for example we tested the needle we tested the display so maybe let's test the test the speaker so let's select gong okay start i believe it's working let's stop it so we've tested the fault codes we've um, checked some live data we performed adaptation change we've performed some output test of the instrument cluster so right now let's go to special functions so you don't have to do uh, those things manually and i believe we have over here some guided functions like service reset this vehicle is not uh, service due so we will not use those functions over here but we have some functions over here like brake pad change mode throttle learning and steering angle uh, sensor learning and diesel engine special functions oh, sorry diesel engine special functions and we have injection injector learning dpf chef check dpf matching if you have replaced your filter dpf regeneration if you need to force it and uh, some other stuff what's else over here air, air suspension matching headlamp headlamp adjustment this is cool if you had your suspension changed and you have xenon lights and you want to make sure that those lights are adjusted properly we have airbag reset so i believe this is um, erasing the cra crash data i hope so and we can and um, disable or enable the start stop system as well as unlock hidden features let's check what's Ah, you need to download it okay i'm not going to do this right now because the internet connection over here is pretty weak but you get the point we have some guided functions over here which you can use in your vehicle if you are not familiar familiar with the exact procedure this will guide you through it okay so i'm back at the main menu let's go to settings because there's a small exclamation mark over here and when i scroll down it's in about section and again in the version section over here and in system next to the system version so let's press the detection system update check version and maybe there's something newer that i should to i should install and yes there it is so there's a download button i hope that it will take just a few seconds and this device is rebooting right now 
So actually, this is updating the Android system. As I said before, this was running Android, and right now I am certain that it is because we have this Android upgrade animation. I'm not sure how long this will take, hopefully a few minutes or so, and after that, um, this device should be operable again. So on top of the um, system update, you have your individu individual apps update. So there's an app uh, responsible for the um, general OBD2 protocol. There's an app for Audi. And there are other apps that you can even get to the, uh, on this device um, uh, via the online store over here, or I believe via the SD card, which I showed you that and there's an SD card port over here at the bottom. Okay, so let's check if we can do some more stuff over here. So, as I said, let's pick the module over here. So, system selection. I know that the infotainment unit is uh, is addressed as 5F, infotainment electronics. And over here, yeah, it connected. Over here, let's go to actuation test. And let's test the display. So it should be somewhere at the end of the list. Uh, test image for the display unit. OK, and let's start it. And we can confirm that the display is actually working. And here we are in Audi A4 2002. So this vehicle is 20 years old at the moment. The scanner connected to it without any issue and right now we are generating the health report so the device is scanning all the present modules this will take a little bit longer than in those uh, modern a um, little bit more modern vehicles like audi q3 and the gold mark 7 because i believe this uh, vehicle is not equipped with gateway which usually stores the list of all installed modules in the vehicle so this uh, scanner needs to um, uh, needs to send information to all the modules that could be installed over here and if something is not installed for example there's no automatic transmission over here this is a manual it will wait about half a minute before the timeout period is over and it will go only then it will go to the next module so the higher the equipment in your vehicle it will actually take less time to scan the whole vehicle system because there's no 30 second timeout period for all the for each missing uh, or each missing uh, control unit. So in a uh, in a second we will have the health report. I will check what's over here and then we will try maybe to connect with the climate control. We have some diagnostic information over here. I will share this with my friend. This is his car actually. So he will be happy to know what's uh, what's up with the vehicle. And right now maybe let's uh, oh no, let's share the report and uh, next, let's try some advanced stuff. So I'm going through the um, output tests and right now I'm testing the uh, displays, the segment displays and indicators over here and it looks okay. So hit the rear window right now. There's a lot of uh, um, output elements and the test is finished right now. Maybe let's try something else. Maybe let's try the same output test of the instrument cluster that we did in Audi Q3. So, actuation test. Okay. Analog displays. That's working. Let's go next. Now we have all the indicators on. We can confirm that they are all working. Now we have gong test. And there's no sound, so I believe the gong is broken. Next is the segment test. So we have all the segments over here and over here um, turned on. And switch and instrument lights test, I believe. Now the backlight is on, but it's too bright to actually confirm it. And that's the end of the, of the test. And here we are in Audi Coupe, but this vehicle had an engine swap. So right now it's equipped with 1.8 turbo engine and the diagnostic port is connected only to the ECU. So there are no other control modules over here. And this device, the C-Reader Elite, successfully connected to the engine control module. So we can check the um, uh, information over here. We can see it's 1.8 R4, so four cylinder. 
uh, 5VT, that's maybe 5 valve per cylinder, I believe. We can see the echo uh, coding. And I believe it will just uh, work with this vehicle as well. So maybe some live data, like the coolant temperature, air intake temperature, and what else over here that we can check without turning on the engine. Maybe let's check the engine speed, so it should be zero right now. And yeah, we have live data over here. We can see that the engine is off, so we have zero RPM at the moment, and the temperature of both the coolant and ambient air. There's one more vehicle that we can try this device with. So this is Fiat Punto from 2008 or maybe 2009. I'm not going to use the Audi application over here, of course, because it will not work. But there's the OBD2 standard protocol over here. So basically, all the vehicles made in the last 20 years should, should support this uh, protocol. And um, this universal protocol will allow you to check some information. So we will check how this uh, works with this uh, vehicle. I can see that we are already connected with the car. We can see that there are no um, diagnostic trouble codes uh, stored in the engine control module. And I believe this device will be limited to connecting only with the engine control module or maybe if the vehicle is uh, equipped with automatic transmission, uh, it will also be able to connect with the transmission control module. But okay, we are over here. I believe we are able to clear the fault codes, read them and clear them, clear the check engine light if there was a check engine light uh, on over here, but it's not. This uh, car, I believe, is uh, fault free, but we can still go to read fault codes and Oh, we have some generic option or we can select one of the brands listed over here. So maybe let's look for Fiat. It's at the end of the, of the list. No fault codes. Okay. So maybe let's check live data. There should be about 20, no, 17 streams over here available to choose from. So maybe let's check engine speed, engine RPM and uh, intake pressure or oh, intake air pressure, intermanifold pressure maybe fuel rail pressure as well. So we have three streams, let's press OK. And we have, uh, we don't have RPM, that's, that's unusual, but I believe this is Fiat specific and not fault of this device, but we can combine those two streams. So the fuel pressure and uh, the boost pressure, intake manifold pressure, and we can view them both on graph. And when I gently bring up the revs, We should see how the data changes over here. Of course, uh, OBD2 protocol is not as fast as those dedicated protocols, so the data sampling over here is much lower, it's much slower. We don't have as much data, so we have about one or two readouts per second. Uh, the graph is not as detailed as I showed you um, uh, earlier with the Audi um, with the Audi application over here but still if you are going to diagnose uh, um, uh, some vehicles some generic vehicles it's better than nothing yeah and the graph looks uh, really uh, really nice over here really clear so if you have some boost pressure uh, boost pressure issues like over boost or um, intake uh, leakage you can use this while driving, uh, while performing a test drive to check if uh, this correlates with something like the fuel pressure or maybe the uh, throttle position or something like that. Uh, it turns out that if I select only engine RPM, I can see it. So I believe this vehicle is supporting just two streams at a time. So if I select three, I cannot see all of them at once. As I said before, there's an online store over here. So if you are connected to Wi-Fi, as this indicator shows, you can go to the mall section and over here you will see all the available extensions that you can buy and download on this device directly. So for example, if you are running a Volvo workshop um, as well as the Audi workshop, you can just download, buy and download the Volvo extension which should be somewhere at the end of the of the list. Oh, I've clicked something. Uh, should be somewhere at the end of the list. And pretty much all the extensions are 35 bucks. And the cool thing is that you can buy the Volvo extension for 35 bucks and you have the full support for 
Volvo brand, but you might be in a different situation. Let's say you are running a detailing workshop. Yeah, so you are often cleaning cars, different brands, and you are um, removing pieces of interiors uh, of interior like the seats with airbags and uh, seat belt buckles. And after you remove those uh, seats, you will have the airbag uh, error over here with the indicator on. So you don't have to buy, for example, Mitsubishi full support to clear the airbag fault in Mitsubishi. You can just look for the airbag support over here. So you will have an airbag dedicated uh, um, application over here and it will support only this function, airbag, um, uh, airbag service, but in all brands. It's the same goes for DPF, for example. If you're running a DPF regeneration workshop, you can just buy the DPF extension over here, which will allow you to um, perform those procedures in all brands, but you are limited to the DPF and uh, DPF functionality. And if you go to settings, you can see that there's an expiration date of this uh, license that's installed in this uh, unit. And it's 10 years old, I believe. Yeah, so it counts the time from the first time you are using this device and uh, you have 10 years before you need to renew the subscription. And what's else over here that I wanted to show you? Maybe uh, languages available over here. We have Spanish, Fr uh, French, German, and there's Italy, there's Ruski, some Chinese languages, and Polski as well. So there's Polish. And what's else over here? Oh, you can enable the screen capture mode. So it will show this little um, uh, screenshot icon over here. And you can just pretty much go anywhere you want, like, for, like to the mall. And there, if there's anything that you want to take uh, a picture of, you don't need to take your phone and do it like this. You can just press the uh, pr press the screenshot button. There's a, a beep. There's an uh, information that the screenshot was saved, and I believe somewhere in the memory of this device you can find the uh, screenshot to uh, share it with the customer. So we can go to uh, we can go to library, and we have this screenshot that I just made. It's not that is interesting, but there's uh, another one over here that I've made um, before few more things. So if you go to settings, there's actually a brightness setting like so. So you can set it set it to be even brighter than I've used it, but I believe 75% is good enough even for a bright environment like we have over here. What's in the sound? We have just the touch, uh, touch sound to be turned on and off. And the other thing is there's actually a built-in battery in this device which will make sure that this device will not turn off, for example, when you are mm, going through a guided uh, function which requires you to turn off the ignition or start the engine. Both those things can cause uh, voltage drops, but this device, uh, thanks to the built-in battery, will not turn off immediately. So now pros and cons. I have my list over here, so let's go through it. First of all, I really like the thing that it supports coding and adaptations and live data streams and output tests. I believe also basic settings and other diagnostic procedures in Volkswagen cars, in Audi vehicles in this case. Um, also guided functions are a really cool addition. If you don't know the exact procedure, uh, this device will guide you through it. It supports uh, Golf Mark 7, so it's a nice touch that they didn't uh, intentionally cut the support from other um, other vehicles that are basically the same as Audi uh, cars. And uh, I like that there's a built-in Wi-Fi, so basically you don't need your PC to do whatever you want with this device. You can use it to uh, update the firmware, you can uh, um, use the exten SD extension port to store more um, applications over here and support for other brands, and you can share the uh, diagnostic reports uh, through the Wi-Fi, through the email function without need of connecting this to the uh, PC whatsoever. And you can even play YouTube videos on it, so how cool is uh, this? There's a backup battery inside as I said uh, just a few seconds before and the overall quality of this device is uh, very good it's very responsive uh, you, we can see this in the settings over here it's easily 60 frames per second over here 
size is very compact it's very lightweight so that's cool and we have this voltage indicator over here which is the vehicle voltage the voltage from the obd2 port so we can easily monitor if the battery is not running out if you are performing a long procedure uh, with the engine off so now from pros to cons and i don't like how the live data selection list looks uh, there's no search field that I can use to um, filter the data and in some cases like uh, I showed you there are over 400 uh, different readouts that you need to browse through and look for the correct one. Also the speaker over here the volume is pretty low so even though you can play YouTube videos over here you cannot hear what's in those videos and I would love it if there was a setting for the font size because I want uh, more data on the display uh, some names like live data streams or adaptation channel names are very long and I would love to fit this data over here rather than have this scrolling uh, large font um, my eyes are still uh, in good shape so I would uh, love to set the font to a smaller size also the system locked down on me one time uh, but that's uh, that's on the uh, original firmware over here before I update, updated anything over here. I was able to restore it, of course, with the reset pin over here. And after that, I had no issues with it whatsoever. So I just feel that I should share uh, this information with you um, as well as the information that this happens. Uh, this happened only one time and I was not able to reproduce this. Okay, so if you are interested in this device, all the uh, details are in the description below this video. You can go and uh, check it out. You can get this device with the link in the description below this video. And that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this review and subscribe for future ones. See you soon.